vs Rock Machine with Rail. Transmitting from 99.9 miles above your head from the progressive mothership. This is Rail, coming to you from aboard the Prog Mothership, orbiting nearly 100 miles above your head. Welcome to another edition of the Progressive Rock Machine. You may recall in the last two weeks, we've looked at the music of the Canterbury scene, and this week we have the great fortune to have Dave Radford from another Canterbury band, Gizmo, who's going to walk us through the story of Gizmo in words and music. So I'm going to hand over to Dave. Let's listen to the story of Gizmo. Hi Dave. Hi Val. Can you walk us through the story of how Gizmo came about and play us some music and maybe give us some details of how the band can be contacted and how listeners can buy your material? Gizmo can be contacted at the band's website www.gizmo.uk.com where our Facebook page is linked to the web page. 180 gram vinyl LPs and CDs can be obtained through the website and downloads are available from Amazon, iTunes and all the main sites. Again, there's information on the web page. Great. Thanks, Dave. We can give that information out again at the end of the show. So, I'm sitting comfortably. Would you like to begin the story of Gizmo? Thanks, Ralph, for having me on your show. I'd like to start by mentioning the latest album, Marlowe's Children, The Innocents, part one of a trilogy. It's about a bunch of kids growing up in the back streets of post-war Canterbury and their exploration into the music scene of the day. Bill, who becomes the drummer, tells us the story as seen through his eyes about himself and his two best friends, Jack and Kelly. The innocence of a group of 10 year old pals and the inspirational journey the music takes them on. Part one brings the listener into the lives of the kids up to the age of 17. The emotions felt, the transformation from child to young adult and of course the formation of their band Marlowe's Children. I mentioned this first because Gizmo was formed in very much the same way as Marlowe's Children. Gizmo began its life in a garden shed and the back room of an old bakery. We would strum away and make a hell of a noise and occasionally play in tune. Over the years it got better. The lineup changed, as did the name of the band, every other week. Finally, in 1974, we agreed on the name Gizmo. A demo was recorded at Oakwood Studios, which at the time was in Graham, the engineer's mother's front room. Pleased with the tape, it was put around several record companies. This led to a spend in a period 1975 to 76 with President Records. A single was released, Just Like Velvet, which had OK reviews and became Record of the Week on NBN Radio. Eight tracks were recorded in all at Regent Sound, Denmark Street, London, but differences in opinions caused the band to split. I was devastated at the time, but from the breakup, a crucial new lineup evolved that would record and release the first two Gizmo albums. The lineup being myself on vocals guitar, Brian Gould, who had previously been with Seventh Wave on keyboards, Morris Memot, who had studied at the Royal Academy of Music on violin and keyboards, and lastly, Steve Wise on drums. The first Gizmo album, just like Master Bates, was recorded above a cafe at Oakwood Studios, Herm Bay, Kent, and released in 1979. Here's a track from it. It's called Come the Day. Thank you. 
see the people laid in trouble Never knowing where they're going Maybe luck will come their way Look at all the lonely rovers Ever searching over and over Looking for a better way Another Monday Another non-day Gotta get my life back right away See the people dressed in summer Don't know where the money comes from Knowing winter's here to stay Look at them, they're only dreaming Don't know what they're really meaning Searching for a better day Another Monday Another Monday Gotta get my life back right away I gotta go on trying Wait for the right time Then I know that I'll be on my way It's gonna get better come the day That was Come the Day from Gizmo's first album, Just Like Master Bates. Something happened on the day he died. You're listening to the progressive rock machine with Rail. Somebody else took his place and bravely cried. I'm a black star. 
Around this time, we were doing a lot of live work, playing with the likes of the Enid, Gong, etc. We were one of the tightest bands in Kent, as I'm sure anyone who came to those 70s gigs would agree. There was fire blowing and pyrotechnics on stage, along with a great light show. We built up a very strong following. 1981 saw the release of our second album, entitled Victims. Again, it was recorded at Oakwood Studios. There was a less folky, more electro feel to it. Let's listen to the title track, Victims.
That was the title track from the Gizmo album Victims. In 1983, I joined a Folkestone band, Atlantis Rising, for a short time. We made one seven-inch single, Tightrope. A year later, Gizmo was rehearsing once more, this time with Nick Milton from Atlantis Rising taking Steve's place on drums, Morris's wife Amalia on keyboard bass, and another newcomer, Martin Reed on guitar, who became like a kid brother to me, and of course Brian and Morris. It sounded better than ever. We gigged almost non-stop for two years, playing a lot of new psychedelic venues that were popping up, alongside bands like the Magic Mushroom Band, Osric Tentacles and numerous others. Here's another track from Victim's album, Time Waits For No One.
That was Time Waits for No One from Gizmo. In 1985, Gizmo recorded their version of Mars from the Planet Suite. It was recorded at the brand new Oakwood International Studios, Canterbury. Very posh compared to Above the Caff in Herne Bay. It was released on cassette only. Do you remember cassettes? Years later, it was added to Victim CD as a bonus track. Seems like a good time to play Mars.
That was Gizmo's version of Mars from the Planet Suite. 1992 and raring to go on a new project, they're peeling onions in the cellar. Nothing sinister in the title, just a place we used to eat at. They would peel onions in the cellar below us and we would all end up in tears. The lineup was me, Martin on guitars, Nick on drums, Grant Matcham from Atlantis Rising on keyboards, various bass players and an exceptional 18 year old sax player, Tony Rico Richardson. We'll listen to Hey You from Peeling Onions album, some great sax on it. Thank you. 
That was Hey You from Peeling Onions album. By 96, I was approached by an Italian label, Mellow Records, and asked if we would do a track for a Van de Graaff Generator tribute album. It was to be a double CD called Eyewitness. Distributed worldwide, featuring bands from different countries. We were the only British act on it. We obliged and chose the track The House With No Door. Recorded at Astra Audio Studios Ashford, Kent with the same lineup as Peeling Onions album. We had no permanent bass player at the time, so I asked a good friend of mine, Hugh Hopper, if he would do it. Hugh had been in Soft Machine and a host of other Canterbury scene bands. Not only did we record the track, we played a couple of gigs with Hugh, including Lee's Cliff Hall Folkestone, alongside Osric Tentacles. Years later, I put The House With No Door on the Gizmo by Gizmo album as a bonus track on the CD version. Since 1982, I had been running a record shop in Canterbury. It was a busy shop, what we're playing as well, it was starting to wear me down. After recording The House With No Door, I retired from playing or writing any music for the next 15 years.
That was The House With No Door by Gizmo, which can be found on the CD album Gizmo by Gizmo. Come with us now on a journey through time and space. You're listening to The Progressive Rock Machine with Rail. The end of 2011 and I was approached by Martin and Nick to get playing again. I'd had one of those years when everything bad that could happen did happen. So I thought, yeah, why not? That first rehearsal, wow, weird or what? It had been so long since I had sung, it felt like the top of my skull had blown right off and there was steam bellowing out of my ears and nostrils. When I landed back on Earth, I found I was still in one piece and yes, I had finally enjoyed singing again. By the end of 2012, there was a new album released simply entitled Gizmo by Gizmo, recorded just outside Canterbury at Big Squeak Studio ran by Matt Barwick. The lineup was Martin and myself, Grant, a new young bass player, Alex Powley, and Ian Harris on drums, who had previously been with Carnatica. In my opinion, it was the best album to date. It felt very good as a whole and great to be playing again. We had done some live work which had gone down well. Things were really looking up when out of the blue, Martin was diagnosed with a brain tumour.
That was The Promise from Gizmo by Gizmo album. Steve Wise heard the album and loved it. He organised a gig at Churchill's in Ramsgate for the 29th of June 2013. In the 70s, Churchill's had been called the Van Gogh. We used to play there and pack the place out. Upstairs, downstairs, out on the streets, people everywhere. Really great times. We played the gig in June, Brian, myself and Steve, all from the 70s gizmo, with Alex and Grant. Martin, although not at all well, joined us on stage to a packed house. It went down a storm. Twelve days later, Martin died. He'd played his last gig. He was 49 years old. I'd like to play Just a Dream from the Gizmo by Gizmo album, some great guitar playing from Martin. <laughs> was just a dream from the gizmo by gizmo album i'd written that song 40 odd years ago never would i believed we would record it 40 years later <laughs> we're only halfway through and it's only gonna get better 
I'm completely operational and all my circuits are functioning perfectly. Good time! Hasta la vista.